Annyeonghaseyo, and welcome to Delving into Asian Psyches, the podcast in which we investigate the pasts, presents, and futures of psychology in the Indo-Pacific. My name is Robin Weber, and today I'm joined by Lee so Young from Korea. Yeah, I'm very happy to be back for a special episode, this time not recording alone in my little room, but with an audience at the Asia Days at University of St. Gallen here in Switzerland. So let me explain. The Asia Days is an annual conference organized by the university's Asia Club, consisting of local students bringing outspoken voices of Asia together and I'm delighted to have been invited for an opportunity to spread awareness about psychology in Asia. And for this matter, I'm lucky to be here with another psych researcher joining us from Seoul, South Korea. Issa Jung, she is a PhD candidate researching coaching psychology at Kwangyun University in Seoul with a focus on perfectionism and self-compassion. After completing her master's at Korea University, she got into clinical practice and built a community about mental well-being online, creating content such as hosting a podcast and writing several books. Today, her content reaches tens of thousands of followers across social media, which is making a difference in a challenging environment for mental health discourse. So South Korea, the country has experienced a busy past century, including colonization, civil war, and eventually an economic miracle. But this has cast a shadow on people's mental health, which is reflected in worrying rates of suicide and mental health issues. According to the health ministry, more than a quarter of people experience mental illness at least once in their lifetime but awareness about it remains low as only a fraction of people seek professional help. In this episode, we'll make an attempt to look beneath these statistics and also see where the future is headed. But before we delve into, let's give a round of applause for Soyeon. Okay, so now I will um, start with the first question. And as I've hinted at in the introduction, it has been a busy time for South Korea. And could you maybe start by giving us an idea of when and what the environment was like when psychology first emerged in Korea? Uh, the development of psychology in Korea is aligned with, start with colonization of Japan in Korea. So when our country is colonized by Japan, it brings many Western studies like psychology. So after Korean War, it begins with clinical psychology in Korea. Then in the 60s and 70s, industrial psychology also emerged in Korea. So now we have 14 division in Korean Psychology Association. And my division is coaching psychology, which is the latest division in our Korean psychological society. So the history of psychology is quite short in Korea. I see, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly as everything else, it had to develop quite quickly, I imagine. Mm -hmm. And with what happened in the war, I think you have talked about this before and issues that were happening. Could you maybe also guide us through how mental health has developed in the country since its emergence? Mm. The Korean War is very important uh, historical event in Korea. So early days, I said that clinical psychology is one of the first division emerged in Korea. It's because after the war, many people went through trauma and there need to be some solution. So as so, the clinical psychologist went through a lot of therapeutic intervention to cure the trauma and develop a, a lot of measurement for for the soldiers and the victims from the war. Mm -hmm. I see. And now when we look at today, I think you have mentioned this in earlier conversations that 
um, there are still traces of that. And uh, can you explain how has mental health developed um, since all that through the generations? I think the trauma still transcends to us because the my grandma's generation is directly affected by the war trauma. And then my parents' generation is the offsprings of that my grandma's generation. So my grandma's generation didn't know the how to how to love, how to care their child because they are so so desperate to just survive. So my parent generation also indirectly affected by the war. And then my generation is the I think the last generation of the war trauma. But the war and the very rapid growth of Korean society also affect our generation because only the fittest survive in our society. And the growth is more important than uh, human rights and well-being in general. So our generation also strive to survive and <laughs> to manage all the stress in our society. So that's why I chose perfectionism as my research agenda, because I think in our society nowadays, perfectionism is so popular. Widespread, maybe. Oh, yeah, widespread. Yeah, I, I can see that. And like many things in Korea, it's had to um, develop and establish itself um, mm -hmm. very quickly. So maybe to bridge the link to the present, how would you say is psychology standing currently in Korean society? I think psychology is uh, underestimated in Korea because many people doesn't believe in psychology like how talking to someone can cure me like this and collectivism in korea also affect the psychology because in collectivism society we don't go to the clinician to solve our problem then we go to our friend our family to solve our problem so when we say we go to like psychiatrist or clinical psychologist, people say, why don't you talk to your parents? Or why don't you talk to your friend? Why do you pay to talk? <laughs> so it's also another reason why psychology is underestimated in our society. Yeah, I can see that. Thanks for sharing how psychology got to today. And now I would also like to um, focus on what you are doing. And you've already mentioned, and uh, I had it in the introduction, your mm -hmm. main field is uh, perfectionism and self-compassion. So mm -hmm. maybe you can start by unpacking these two terms and mm -hmm. how you're bringing them together in your research also. Mm -hmm. Perfectionism is a personality trait that characterized by unrealistic high standard about oneself and self-criticism. So we strive to be perfect, but when we fail, we harshly self-blame ourselves. So people, when I, when I say that I, I, I study perfectionism, people always ask me, how, how can we cure perfectionism? So I think the antidote for perfectionism is self-compassion, which is being kindful to ourselves and accepting painful emotion unjudgmentally and accepting that pain is one of the most common human experience. So that's why I study two agenda at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I can see how that is playing out. And of course, mm -hmm. it makes sense to put things together. I think we also got a hint on your interest, also with your background, of course, um, working in the clinical field and now in coaching. Maybe if there is um, also some personal kind of motivation you would like to share with you, or maybe you also have some uh, questions that you would like to answer with this. Mm, 
I'm Korean and I am perfectionist at the same time. <laughs> I habitually experience burnout because I work too hard, like seven days in a week. And I think it's not enough. Like I always blame myself. Why don't I work as hard as any other Korean? And I, I didn't know how to get rest. I think it sounds weird to you, but in Korea, many people seriously say that I don't know how to get a rest because they, even they are doing nothing, they feel bad about doing nothing. Like, why don't I do something other, other thing like exercise, reading, <laughs> learn English? So, they fidgeting all the time. So I was one of them. So after I seriously experienced burnout, I, I think I should change something. Then I learned uh, self-compassion and I practiced it. And now I am teaching it. Yeah, if, I think it's always great when you have like a personal story behind your research. I think even <laughs> in the psychology, this is quite a common trend. <laughs> and yeah, it, it resonates what you're um telling about it's almost kind of a fear of missing out right mm. that you could be doing something more productively yes so, yeah. mm. so do you also see that in this trend of how quickly korea has developed itself and that there are like social norms that are upkeeping this of course productivity is golden rule in korea like you have to be productive or you're useless. I think people believe that even though you go to work and you work eight hours, after the work, you have to do something to improve yourself. I, I think it's crazy, but in Korea, people call it katseng, which means God's life, life of God. You have to live life of God and being like 100% pro activity so just human life is not enough in korea you have become a, a godlike kind of person yes yeah. okay okay so i also um see how um that drives your motivation to the uh, awareness about mental health also beyond the research field and mm -hmm. you've become very active on various social media Kind of outlets and maybe you can also just describe first uh, what you're doing there and what you what is your outlook in doing it i'm also doing i am creator like edu entertainer in psychological field so i draw like cartoon to explain the concept of self-compassion and perfectionism and i do youtube to explain how self-compassion works and how coaching psychology works so i'm also a very active creator as well yes yes we can tell everyone i think who looks at your pages <laughs> <laughs> for a for a moment and so that that was even before your research uh interest yes so, um, tell us like how did you get into that and how did it take off so much in a society that seems so stigmatizing about it. Mm -hmm. I started my cartoon as my depression story. I was chronical, chronically depressed since I was young. So I was talking about my depression, my family history, and my taking anti-depression pills. So many people got interested in my story. and. I realized that many people st stigmatize that about mental health, mental health illness as well. And they blame themselves for being ill and they are too burdened or pressed to go to see psych psychiatrist or clinical psychologist. So I open my, I, I share my story. It, it's okay to go psychologist to see Psychiatrist, it's not something weird. It, it's if you need glass, you you take the glass. It's like that. 
Right. I've heard you um, make this point in several locations, right? Mm -hmm. To kind of uh, lower the barriers mm -hmm. um, to, as you said, um, pe for people to get help mm -hmm. and lower the stigma around it. So you do have, um, you continue also your coaching practice, which mm -hmm. um, I think has more delved into um, goal setting, right? Yes. Uh, if you like, you can also expand on this. We have time. Uh, coaching psychology is about obtain, attaining your goal. And <laughs> I realize in Korea, why people do not attain goal? Because they don't have energy. Why they don't have energy? They are so uh, into self-blaming. And they have too much goal. Like, they have too high standard goal. So before they got into the goal, they are overwhelmed. By the goal, so so I study perfectionism. <laughs> it's really interfere to obtaining goal and success success their life interest. Okay, yeah, and that way you have been running into this issue of perfectionism. Then, mm -hmm. as I can understand, yes. re repeatedly uh, in many different areas mm -hmm. of your life. Mm -hmm. um, is there also um, other topics that you have noticed in Korean society related to mental health? Uh, in Korea, there are many people who are depressed. I, I think it's uh, related to labor because in Korea, labor time is too long. So they are easily burned out and burnout could lead to depression and there are also the issue of minimum wage minimum wage in korea is too low so even though they are depressed and need some professional help they cannot afford the fee so i think it's very important uh issue in korea yeah, the, the pay, I think, even more so right now, as I've uh, heard that there is also a protest going on around yes, yes, yes. doctors at the moment, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does that, by the way, also um, affect um, psychologists or psychiatrists? Not, not yeah. really. Not really in field of psychology, because we, in psychology, we don't have any insurance issue, because psychology practice is not considered as professional in Korea. So we are not included in insurance system. Oh, yeah. I, I think that says even more about it than yeah. if it were, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, and that leads uh, nicely to um, what I wanted to ask you next in how the acceptance or the perception of psychology uh, has developed in recent years as also these issues have become more and more prevalent. Mm -hmm. Do you notice a shift at all, or how would you describe the current state of psychology mm -hmm. in society? It's I, I noticed the big gap difference between generation and also socioeconomical status. When you are young and you are well educated, you are more prone to go see the professional psychologist or psychiatrist, whatever. But if you are old and you are not very well educated, you don't go see doctor. They don't know it's mental illness. They are literally unaware of mental illness. So there are a lot of prejudice and unawareness in Korea still. I see. And then maybe um, on the contrary, do you also see an area where psychology has gained or um, is viewed um, more welcoming, maybe outside of the clinical field? Oh, yes, there are a lot of shift uh, about mental illness. So there are changing, it, it, it's changing. There are more welcome, there are more welcoming environment about psychology and clinic, clinical field. But majority of society still don't know that there are other fields of psychology other than clinical and counseling psychology. So my friend still think I'm counseling psychologist. 
even though I'm coaching psychologist. Yeah, so it's hard to like to make these distinctions. And of course, we also have psychology in organizations, mm -hmm. or I think you have hinted at also in development. Yes. Um, to um, do that, and um, it's still a bit difficult for the society to grasp that there's um, these areas too. But do you know if where these areas are operating, they are um, making progress also in the way it's being accepted? Most of the psychologists in Korea become professor or not, they don't have a job. But in Korea, they're, well, like any other country, there are not many professors. And unlike America, United States, there are not many research jobs in Korea because we don't investigate money to research field. So if you want to be a psychologist, it's whether you become a practitioner or become professor. So other field like organization psychology, any other like pr primary field of psychology is the only way is become a professor. Oh, really? It's interesting. I would have thought like in mm -hmm. South Korea, which is so business oriented, would have mm -hmm. utilized that. but. It seems that even in that area, they, they struggle to overcome this um, clinical. There seem to be harnessed by this clinical um, stigma. Mm -hmm. That is, do I uh, interpret that correctly? I think it's more like it, it's not like uh, issue of stigmatization. It's more like issue of money. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got it. Uh, uh, and so. It, just talked about this earlier, how it's also important where the funding is coming from and mm -hmm. where it goes into, right? Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, we can use to also talk about the, the future for a little bit before we open up the discussion. Mm -hmm. And with, uh, with you doing your research, keeping up your engagement online and in, in coaching as well, like, um, how do you see, you can answer this from two angles, basically your own um, kind of development in psychology, but maybe also psychology on mm -hmm. the whole in South Korea. Mm -hmm. What's your outlook on that? Mm, I think future in Korea is quite promising, I hope, because uh, more and more university open psychology course and master course in their university. So there will be more uh, professional psychologists in Korea. There are more people who become aware of psychological services in Korea. So there will be more consumer as well. But my 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 teacher said my my professor said, uh, in Korea, psychology is always blue ocean, like always but never bloom. <laughs> it's always in the process of developing more, but never quite gets there. Yes. Um, so but I see your point. Yeah, it, you can have all the money invested in it, but if there are no people that mm -hmm. actually go into the field and utilize it, um, mm -hmm. it's hard to make that happen. And I think mm -hmm. we've seen that also in a few countries where people go study abroad or um, after their study go abroad because the environment is better over there, but that of course then harms the development of the country itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so f maybe to get back to you personally, like, um, do you have any outlook or desires where you would like to contribute to the blooming of South Korean psychology? <laughs> I'm trying to introduce coaching psychology to the people. So there are, uh, most of people don't know what coaching psychology is or even it exists. So I try with my cartoon to explain it and how uh, you can use it. Right. I do think you're already on a very good track about that. And I'm looking forward to see where it takes you. Mm -hmm. um, so now I think we're at a good timing to also allow some questions for the, for, from the audience. Mm -hmm. um, I'll turn you over to them so that you can see who is asking. So er, anyone who might be wondering about anything, 
yeah, you can hold the microphone here. Okay. The Hi, my name is Sarah. Nice to meet you. Nice um, meet you. I have a question regarding work life in Korea. So I know that mm -hmm. it's quite important, as you said. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask about how you see the future, if you see that there is like change also in psychological help and assistance at the workplace, because it's also increasingly more important in the West side. And I, mm -hmm. I guess a lot of companies have implemented some way to help work with the workers mm -hmm. there. Um, and I wanted to ask if there was any change in South Korea and if you think that it's um, going to change soon or in near future. Yes, that was a question. Okay. Are you planning to come to Korea? <laughs> If yes, I don't recommend. But I will. <laughs> she said maybe, so she, you can yeah. still influence her. There is system as well in Korea in business in business setting. Or uh, if you are a worker, you can get a, ser a clinical psychologist service, and you can do counseling as for free. But not many worker uh, apply. Uh, get help from that system because the session is very limited, like 10 session max. And also the business company doesn't like to use the psychologist help because they, they don't trust psychologist. They think it's just soothing, soothing system for soothing, helping, soothing help for the worker. So it's it's not related to productivity. They want the the business corporation want worker to be productive, not be well. So there that's the issue. So there are more and more company hiring coaching psychologists to enhance productivity of worker, but it's just beginning setting. So if you want to come to Korea, maybe next to 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit disappointing, but yeah, I, I can see again how the f beliefs about psychology here influence mm -hmm. um, other fields again that were not anticipated before. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have any other questions? Yes. Hello, my name is Pei, so nice to meet you. Um, I have a question regarding um, Gen Z and Gen Y. Um, do you see a pattern of which generation is more prone to uh, burnout and which generation is more open to seek help? Mm. Uh, I think almost every generation is vulnerable to burnout in, in South Korea. Uh, but young well educated female are more prone to see seek help like see psychiatrist or clinical psychologists but people who need the help most who is old not well educated lower so lower income don't seek help that's the problem and that contributes the high rate of suicide Suicidity in Korea. Thanks again for that insight. And mm -hmm. does any other person? Yes. Hi, my name is Stefan. Nice to meet you. Um, I've understood it. I've learned that a lot of companies they don't like um, their employees to go to psychologists because it's not contributing to their productivity. Um, but on the other hand, employee well-being is a factor that increases productivity for a company. Mm -hmm. And how do you think or what needs to be done that the companies understand or like how can this mindset shift be fostered so companies understand that employee well-being contributes to productivity? I hope I knew the answer. <laughs> but... I think the CEO, C level should take the service first and they have to realize it really helps them to work well. But the point is, I, I also study organization psychology, but the research says that 
the well-being and productivity is not always come together. So, <laughs> so in companies, uh, situation, even though happier, happier worker work better, it's question. So we should convince that uh, as a psychologist, I have to persuade whether they work well or not. As a human, we have right to be happy. And as a part of a uh, social co- corporation also take responsibility for <laughs> workers' happiness. I think it, I think there sh- should be the mind shift that as a part of uh, society, we are all responsible for the society's happiness. I try my best. <laughs> so understanding is your responsibility. <laughs> mm, thank you for that. I can also imagine how the missing research um, also contributes to that, right? So of course, in the West, we have research that provides the, this information, but companies might just say, yeah, this uh, might work in in uh, the West, but here in Korea, it's kind of different. And mm-hmm. uh, we don't really know if that's any good, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, one more. I think in Korea, many, many corporation is based on manufacture. So in manufacturing company, workers' happiness doesn't directly relate it to productivity. I think that's the difference that makes the difference as well. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, would anybody else would like to know something from Suyun? Um, hi, my name is Anna. Thank you so much for all the insights. Um, I was reading a lot about the feminist wave in South Korea, and I was wondering whether um, women are more affected by this per- perfectionism that you described in your talk. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, I I think so, because they are in uh, women in South Korea are more pressured to be perfect. Like they, they have to be behave well, kindly, but, but they, and they are more exposed to all kind of microaggression. So they, to protect themselves, they have to be flawless. So I think women are more prone, uh, more vulnerable to perfectionism in Korea. I see. Maybe if I uh, can um, ask a follow-up question on that, do we also have an idea where that stems from? Of course, many countries around the world are very patriarchal, um, though we often see, like especially Confucian uh, societies, have seem to have a um, tendency for that. And mm-hmm. if you see any cultural or other backgrounds that um, um, facilitate these beliefs. Mm, I think it's not belief. It's fact that women are more attacked or by society. Like, look at me. I'm very well dressed and I put good makeup. It's, it's because it's standard in Korea. I have to look good and be nice and be good as a Korean woman. So I think, uh, I think it's, environment that pressuring me and my other other friends yeah yeah. well thank you for this answer as well that we also got into um this part about south korea uh are there any more questions from the audience yes you may come again maybe just another question uh regarding the neighboring countries how do you think south korea um situates itself regarding the de- development of psychology because i know that also china is very hard on students for example mm-hmm. um and there is a l- need for psychological hel- uh, help i would mm-hmm. say but also in japan but how do you think that um south korea is developing uh, compared to them i i don't think we are better in any aspect but when I'm researching uh, perfectionism research, I see a lot of research uh, took place China, Korea, and Japan. So I think three countries shares same problem. 
so it's good to delve into all these other kind of areas where we also see mental health happening. I um, I think we have um, covered a lot of ground here. We have now reached the end of the episode and I think we all greatly appreciated you coming on and sharing your invaluable insights. Now, if anyone would like to get in touch with you, if they maybe have a later question or maybe knows Korean and is curious about your content, how can they most easily find you? You can find me on Instagram, Sobam Breeze, or you can contact me with email. That's amazing. I will um, put your Instagram handle in the show notes. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much to you, Soyun, uh, but also my audience here at the Asia Days, everyone who has been tuning in to this podcast episode later on as well. It's been a pleasure creating this, and I will now be off to Asia to start my own PhD. So will I continue this series or will I be buried under an avalanche of literature soon? Who knows, but either way, I'll keep up my dedication for psychology, such as you as well. And to all of you, I wish that you may get to engage with what you're passionate about as well. And with that, thank you, uh, goodbye, and have a wonderful time. <laughs>